Yeah, like that's from the room next door. Um, first, one question for each. Uh, Ollie, um, is it, we saw Phil Jones didn't travel. Uh, is there anybody else that wasn't able to travel? Is there any fitness news? And, and Brandon, yeah. you've, you started the season with the, with the reserve team. You, you've stepped up and now are going to be ending it playing in a major finals for, for Man United. How does that feel? Yeah, I think um, it's been uh, a crazy season for me, me, myself and my family, to be honest. And we've been, um, obviously I started with the reserves and now I'm, now I'm playing with the first team and I just want to carry it on and play as many games as possible. And for me, the, we, we've travelled with a big squad. Uh, of course, uh, Phil, Axel and Luke are the three that we've uh, left behind. David McDonald from the Daily Mirror. Hi. Hi. International managers in the past have talked about the difficulties of, of keeping players stimulated during a tournament. I mean, with the lockdown measures in place as well, it's even more difficult for you. How, how do you tend to keep the players you know, entertained and, and, and stop them from going stir crazy? Because you presumably you know, obviously could be out here for the best part of two weeks. Yeah, we'll cross we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. I think, of course, we've put plans in place, but for me, it's only about uh, this game now. You can't think too far ahead. Uh, it's a knockout tournament. Uh, if if you don't perform, you you you're going home. So, if we go through, then we got a few days for the next game. But at the moment, we don't have that problem. Samuel Lockhurst from the Manchester Evening News. Great. Uh, Brandon, it was, uh, you, you've had such a great season with the breakthrough coming um, relatively late where you didn't go on the pre-season tour. I mean, at what stage did you feel as though you were completely in the first team squad for the rest of the season, that you, you very much belonged there? Um, I think um, it's not a case of that because at any time I can I can drop down into the 23s and I could pick up an injury or anything. So I'm just focused on what I'm doing and I want to keep working hard, keep on improving what I need to improve on and try and play as many games as a club as I can. Simon Stone, BBC. Brandon, um, do you really think you could... <laughs> You could get dropped down to the under 23s. I mean, you, you've had a, an incredible journey so far. Yeah, I think it's um, it's just down to myself to keep on improving and keep keep myself fit and, and ready to play every game like I am. And I'm always ready for the next game. And now we've got um, games coming up, but we've got a game to t tomorrow, and it's one it's a one-off game, so we need to win. Andy Mitten. Sorry can, you, can you, sorry, can you start again, Andy? We couldn't quite hear that. Is this okay? Can you hear me now? Yep, can hear you. Hi, Oli. Can you describe your relationship with Sally as a, a player, as a manager? You know him very well. You've watched him and his progress at FC Copenhagen and his type of personality. Well, I've known Stoller since... Uh... Well, I played against him the first time in '95, so I've known him for uh, for years. He's he's had a a very good career as a as a player. Uh, he was always the one we we looked to when we played against them to stop stop him playing, create a midfielder. Then he, he's had a fantastic coaching career. He started off with his home team, home hometown uh, Hamkam. Then he's been at Copenhagen two uh, two spells. Been in uh, Germany here in Cologne. Been in the championship with Wolves, so in a little, in a similar way, he's he's had his uh, he's had his ups and downs, but he's really come come through again. Uh, he's uh, he's leaving a legacy at at uh, Copenhagen. Now they're in the in the quarters for the first time, so it's step by step for him. I went to Copenhagen to do my study visit for the pro license which was uh, very kind of him to let me in and uh, they lost to Chelsea so hopefully this time they'll lose to us Paul Hurst the Times Hi Paul hey, Can you hear me okay? Yeah, yeah. Um, I believe him obviously been playing behind closed doors for quite a while now but is it still a bit Kind of strange playing in 
such an important kind of run of fixtures now, like a, a big European final, and there's not going to be fans here. I think uh, it is strange, and it, it is not football as it should be. And I think it's changed a little bit. I think, uh, you know, that little bit of that passion and the edge to the game uh, is missing because the fans, they, they've got to be there. But I, I, our players, I have to commend our players. They've done really well. They've handled the situation really well. Uh, and I know our fans can't wait to get, uh, get back at Old Trafford and support us. So we'll, we'll just have to try to make the most of this um, uh, this Europa League now and uh, hopefully get as far as we can and uh, so they're looking forward to, uh, even more to uh, to seeing the players. Carrie Brown be in sport. Hi Carrie. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Hi, I, mean, I want to ask you about Paul Pogba. A year ago, he talked about needing a new challenge, but yesterday he posted a video celebrating his fourth year anniversary of returning to Manchester United. Got the same haircut that he had on that announcement. What does it mean to you as a coach that he's now happy to be at this club and looking forward, it seems, to an exciting future? I've answered uh, numerous questions on Paul and uh, we're delighted that he uh, he's back playing, he's fit, he's enjoying his football. Uh, of course, he's he's uh, got uh, time to or lost. He's got to make up for lost time, and he's trying to do that. He's training extra. He's always uh, a great personality in and around the, the place, and hopefully, we can see him uh, lift this trophy that he's done before. Um, he's. He's professional. He's a fantastic boy, and uh, I'm delighted that we've um, we've got him in the team. Sam Matterface, Talksport. Hi, Oli. Um, generally, but not always, you've selected Sergio Romero in your cup games. How difficult is it for you to have to make a choice between your two goalkeepers for the rest of this tournament? <laughs> That's an obvious question, because. Uh, I think I must be the the most privileged uh, manager in the world with the goalkeeper department we've got with Sergio, David and you've got Dean Henderson as well coming back. So you've got three there, top, top keepers. And uh, this Europa League or, or this season has shown again uh, how important Sergio has been to us. And for me also, David's been uh, always, always uh, performing there. So... We'll, we'll see what we do the uh, rest of the season and uh, going forward. Uh, difficult? Yeah, of course it is. Every, uh, that, that's, but that's a nice problem to have. Laurie Whitwell, The Athletic. Hi, Brandon. Question for you, if that's OK. Um, you play with such personality and aggression on the pitch. I just wondered where that comes from. Um, and also you played in different positions, uh, left wing back, left back, I think even right wing against Liverpool. I wondered if you had any thoughts on uh, where you play on the pitch. Yeah, I think it's from um, when I've been a, been a kid here and from the age of eight, it's, it's drilled into you from a young age what, what this club means and it's part of the DNA to, to have that inside you, but you've got to have it controlled and not over the top. So I think that's just um, from what the, the United coaches over the years gave me and... Um, I think positioning, um, wherever the manager wants me to play, I'm always willing to put a shift in and put, um, do my job. So I'm just happy to be out on the field, to be honest. It doesn't matter where I play. Jamie Jackson, The Guardian. Hi, Oli. Um, with regard to Anthony Martial, you've spoken about him in the past. You, know, you want him to get more sort of poachers goals. He seems to be doing that. Are you also sort of pleased with how he's becoming kind of almost a powerhouse centre forward now? He's, he's got a bit more strength, there's more barracking runs. Is that something which you, know, you, you worked on that, that you like to see? Oh, definitely. Ant Anto has take, uh, made uh, huge strides this season in uh, many uh, aspects of his game. Uh, of course, I like him being uh, scoring, being in between the posts, scoring, call it the simple goals, because we know we can do the, the world this, like he, he's done a few times. And he's in the gym a lot. 
Uh, and he's working on, on his uh, fitness and strength with the fitness staff. They've done a fantastic job with him. Uh, he's phys physically uh, at his best level, I think, in his career. And um, I'm just uh, looking forward to seeing him improve uh, even more. And uh, there's, there's more to come from Anthony, definitely. Martin Schmidt from Bold. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Another question for Ole. Um, as you said, this is the Norway quarterfinal for FC Copenhagen. Uh, they've beaten the Scottish and the Turkish champions. Are you surprised to see them this far in the tournament? And if you could identify some main strength of Copenhagen? No, I'm not surprised uh, at all. I know uh, how Stola has built uh, the club and uh, what they're about. Of course, we have played uh, against them when we were at Molde. We've, I've known Stola for such a long time. And uh, Copenhagen's had a great history in, uh, in getting to, uh, to Europe and doing well in Europe. And I think Stola's uh, team, they've, they've got individuals there. Um, very good players, there's young, young forwards, interesting, uh, the, t the two, three of them, to be fair, and uh, experienced players in, in midfield and at the back. Uh, but I think the biggest strength is the teamwork and how well organised uh, Stola's teams always are. Rob Dawson, ESPN. Um. You're in the, the later rounds of a major European tournament, but obviously there are, there are no fans here, there are no fans in the stadium. Where it's a shortened tournament with, with one leg games. If you were to go on and, and win it, would, would it mean as much, do you think, with all the changes that have had to be made to, to get it on? Well, we, we are in a strange uh, period uh, and strange times at the moment, unprecedented, and we've just got to make the most of it. And if if we're uh, able to go through to the semis and then uh, to a final, uh, it would mean uh, a lot to uh, the players, the club, the supporters, the staff. Of course, uh, we just have to make the, the best out of a difficult situation. James Ducker. Can you, can you hear me okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Oli, um, just you mentioned uh, your goalkeepers before. I was just wondering if you'd uh, made a decision on what is happening with Dean Henson next season. And also, you know, during your time as a striker at Man United, you obviously had enormous competition up front and you, you continually sort of raised, e raised each other's standards. Do you feel Anthony, Marcus and Mason are almost egging each other on? I think it's, uh, as you say, uh, Competition for places is important, and we're looking to uh, have competition for places uh, with uh, that we have Dean, uh, Sergio, uh, David at the moment in, in the ranks. Uh, Lee, of course, the fantastic professional as he is, he's, he's backing them up. But it'll be difficult, obviously, to keep uh, three of them at the club. So we'll we'll see what the decision will be be there. Forward positions. <laughs> Scoring goals is always good for strikers. Seeing others scoring goals, it gives you uh, as well a, a little bit of an edge that uh, you you don't want to be uh, behind them, but you also play for the team. And the three of them have been been backing each other up. Uh, and for me, I hope they will develop uh, and continue the development because that's exciting times for United. And in the in next few years, Daniel Falla. For for Ole, <clears throat> uh, we're talking about you and uh, and Stone. I have a good situation to have uh, two Norwegian managers uh, uh, playing against each other. Um, you being kind of uh, new and Stone being in the game for for a long time. How do you see yourself uh, up against uh, Stone? Who is the best uh, Norwegian coach? Uh, the one with the, the results or the one being in the by far biggest club? <laughs> Um, first of all, it's not me against Stoller. We're not playing against each other. And uh, yeah, Stoller's had a very good career. Uh, he's had about 750 games or something. I, I think I'm, I'm up. To, I'm getting towards 400 as well. I've been a manager for almost 10 years, so I'm not that new. 
So uh, that's uh, it depends on uh, what you think is new. Uh, Stoll is a bit older than me, you, know, you see, and you can probably see that by. Uh, well, I'm I'm turning grey. Uh, hopefully, I'll, I'll I'll keep the hair. Chris, will you let the nail? Can you hear me, Ollie? Yep. Hi there. Um, I'll ask you about. Um, obviously, you've got a Champions League place by finishing third this season. Has that taken the pressure off you going into the final stages of this competition? Now, there's, there's not as much at stake, basically. Well, I, I don't think so, because, uh, you know, we, we went into this season knowing that Europa League is a great chance for us, uh, one, to get a trophy. Uh, to get far in the in the tournament, but also to groom a few of the youngsters, and it was perfect for us. Um, I think if we'd been in the Champions League this season, of course we all want to be in the Champions League, but I probably or maybe wouldn't have had the chance to play the likes of Brandon as much as we have Mason. You know, so many of the young kids and um, the the players that have now started what's going to be fantastic careers. So Europa League has always been about uh, that as well. It's about uh, keeping the squad together, having a group that is working together in uh, giving people chances, which uh, when they take them, Brandon sits next to me and is going to play in a, in an, in a quarter final in, a, in the Euro Europa League. That is a great achievement for him th this season and it's been perfect for us. Okay, last question, Mads Glenn, well last. Um, Solskjaer, you have only lost one of the last 23 games. What is the, what, how do you see the, the, the team have changed the last, uh, the last five, mm. five months? Well, we have developed through the season. We have, uh, we've had a squad that's been working together, and of course, some uh, there were a few changes in in the January window that uh, made us even stronger. But also, the the team, the work teamwork that we've done, uh, all the principles, they were uh, getting more and more uh, in the group, uh, and it's more and more and more natural. And we've found good form. Uh, of course, we have good good players. We got players back from injury, and uh, one in 23 is one too many. Okay, thank you, everybody. That concludes the Manchester United press conference.